Great. Before I share the word of God, just, just briefly, just to uh, talk about the Chinese New Year, Vietnamese Chinese New Year Fellowship. Remember Reverend Paul I, who came for our missions convention, right? So, and uh, he has uh, got a band, a Vietnamese band, to come for a concert on one of the night before that. After that, the next day, you know, he's going to bring them to a place in uh, Linking where we have booked a place where to do discipling, evangelism, you know, get them saved, and then straight away get them baptized in water. You know, so, so it's compact. Go there, they can't escape, you know. So uh, we really need uh, finances for, to organize this event, uh, the concert, get them, uh, uh, prepare meals for them. Because during the Chinese New Year, you know, the Vietnamese cannot go back, you know, to celebrate. So this is time when you're going to gather them to celebrate and reach out to them. All right, so I need you, you know, to come back to me to basically pledge and see how much you can sponsor for this event. Then we can uh, organize this for the Vietnamese, all right? So by next Sunday, if earlier, even better, so that we can confirm uh, everything. As you come in this uh, morning, you also will receive a fly pamphlet, a prospectus on our equipped calendar for this year. Very nicely done. Don't you think so? All right, and... Uh, it's pointless if you don't sign up for all these equipping courses. Amen, right? All right, so take note of that. It's right from January to June. Various uh, courses have been set up for you because we have entered into the second element of our discipleship framework, and that is to be equipped for these six months. Huh? So take note of that. And um, there's one more because uh, there was uh, supposed not to be in... During this period of time, this first half, mentoring, mentoring training is supposed to be the second half of this year, but because Pastor Benny Ho, uh, he is the prime mover in the sense, basically in our consultancy with the discipleship framework, he's able to make it on, in May, May 13 and May 14. So that's why you don't see it here, which I just have been uh, uh, able to connect with him and to arrange that for him to come. It's very, very busy man. Uh, always heavy demand for his ministry. So finally, he said, I can take up this weekend to come. So uh, I, during the leaders' meeting, I announced that it's from July 1st to 3rd. Uh, but take note of this now, May 13th to 14th, okay? Mentoring, you want to be here to be trained. Uh, about mentoring, how to mentor as well, because we want everybody either to be mentored or to mentor. Okay, so take note of that. Exciting things are happening. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, everybody likes to have gifts or not, to receive gifts or not. How many of you like to receive gifts? There are no hands that are raised up, so you don't really like to receive gifts. Now, if you to give you the gift, then you pass it to me. I'm sure everybody likes to receive gifts. Whether you like the gift or not, it's another different matter, right? <laughs> but everybody loves to receive gifts. Huh? And then, do you know that God has given every single one of you spiritual gifts? Do you know that? Do you know that you have received a gift? At least a gift. If you don't believe, let's turn to the Bible. Come, let's get the first slide out. Today, I'm going to share with you gifted to impact. All right, you have been gifted. Every one of you have received spiritual gifts from God and for an impact, to make an impact. All right, if you do not believe me whether you have received a gift or not, let's look at the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 tells us, Now to each one, now to each one, each one means what? Every single one. Isn't it right? Isn't it right? Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. In this version, the manifestation, it means the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit is a manifestation of the Spirit. How do you know that is the Holy Spirit? It's through the spiritual gifts as well. So each one has been given. Then 1 Peter chapter 4 Verse 10 says, as each has received a gift. It didn't say, as some have received a gift, but as each, every single one again. 
Then, in, uh, uh, of course, to use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Then Romans chapter 12, verse 6, has this. We have different gifts. All of us have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So now do you believe that you have received a gift from God? So you don't believe, huh? <laughs> So do you believe that you have received a gift from God? You say, yes, I have received a gift. At least a gift, or if not, gifts. Huh? So in fact, all of us are gifted. You know, we talk about child prodigies or some of those who are very gifted, you know, talented, that kind of thing. Some of these are young people who have been given the unbelievable intelligence or amazing talents or seemingly unnatural physical abilities. But such gifted individuals are rare. You know? I don't know whether there's any one of these who are so-called, you know, according to the world, the gifted kind of people. Um, but majority of us are basically astoundingly average. <laughs> But yet, as I look at you today, I can say with confidence that all of us, each one of you, is gifted. Say to your neighbor, you and I are gifted. That's right. You know, on Vision Sunday, I spoke to you about it's time to grow. Right? This morning, I also shared with the Chinese section that it's time to grow. Time to grow. And the key outcome for 2016 is spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. So following on from there, today we will embark on a, what I call a spiritual gifts inventory exercise. Now, if you have come in this morning, and the, the ushers will have given you a stack of papers. How many of you do not have that? You want to raise your hand, ushers? Just to, yeah, there's one here. In front, two, up here, and the musicians may not have received it. Huh? Just keep your hands raised up. I want you to have a copy of it. Huh? Ashes, sorry to cut you unaware. I think we need more help. <laughs> okay, yeah. Just keep your hand raised up. I want you to all to have a copy. Huh? Please make sure you have a copy. All right. We're going to embark on this spiritual gift inventory exercise, basically, which is meant to help. You know, I've told you all of us are gifted. The Bible tells us that each one of you has been gifted, has been received a gift. But some of us may not know. I mean, I have received a gift, but I don't know what is my gift. I mean, realize some of you may have realized what is your gift, but majority may not. And so. I want to embark on this to help you to discover the gifts that God has given to each one of us, each one of you, help you to discover. So let me enlighten all of us again on the fact that all of us are gifted not to show it off, not to, you know, have it for fun or something like that, but all of us have been gifted to impact. To make an impact. God has given you gifts for a purpose. And that's to make an impact out of it. Amen? So let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 15 again. I've shared this during a Vision Sunday, so I'm going to share this passage again. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 15. Again, it says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Now, all these are basically spiritual gifts that have been given. Of course, we talk about this as a five-fold ministries, okay? But out of this is basically a gifting that God has given apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the purpose of to equip the people, his people, not just any people, but God's people, and you are God's people, to, for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up. 
until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. And become a mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. Can you see that? From this portion of Scripture, you and I are gifted to make an impact. What are this kind of impact? There's in spiritual impact of growth, of maturity, to become more like Christ. Impact to grow, impact to maturity, impact to become like Christ. So this passage certainly revealed to us how much of an impact when gifts are actually used, identified first, and then used rightly, actively, and diligently. The impact will happen when gifts are used precisely for that. So you and I are not just mediocre, average Joes. You are gifted to impact. I just look at every one of you here, you know. I see that you are gifted to impact. Where my eyes focus on, you are gifted to impact. Why don't you say to yourself, I am gifted to impact. That's right. So now that we are convinced that we are gifted for impact, let's look at what are spiritual gifts. Yeah? We need to be familiar with our gifts, right, before we can actually use it, you know, for impact. Let's look, have a look. What are spiritual gifts? Let me give you a de definition. Huh? You see, God doesn't want his people to be ignorant of the gift. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 says, God would not want us to be ignorant of these gifts. He wants us to be familiar with it. All right, so what is a spiritual gift? A spiritual gift is a de special divine empowerment bestowed on each believer by the Holy Spirit. So it's special, it's divine bestowment, empowerment. And it's bestowed on every believer. By who? The Holy Spirit. And it's for the purpose to accomplish a given ministry. God's way, to accomplish given ministry, God's way, not any man's way, according to His grace and discernment to be used not in any other context, but in the context of the body of Christ. The church, in the context of the body of Christ, the church. Now, in this definition, there are basically two words that are used with regards to spiritual gifts in terms of the Greek. The first word you have is what I would call the charismata. Okay? Too fast for you to write notes. Pull out your, he your handphone and... <laughs> <laughs> now, what is a charismata? You see, it's been used in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse, 9, verse 4, 9, 28, 30, and 31. And it's been used to, de uh, to, 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 to define it as gifts of grace. Uh, charismata is gifts of grace. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10, it's been used to denote the nine supernatural gifts. They are listed there. Okay? You know, I don't know, remember when um, the first week, the, the Vision Sunday, there was a vision that God showed me about the gold dust that's going to cover us with grace, uh, full of grace. And one of the possible manifestations of that grace will indeed will be the showering of spiritual gifts that's going to cover the church as an act of God's grace. You see, you know why? 
You've got to remember when I talk about enduring vision Sunday, I saw that vision of God that's covering. We need grace. We need grace in times of difficulty and all that. That's why we need grace because when you come and the operation of the spiritual gift, the people of God will be edified, will be strengthened. That will be the manifestation of God's grace coming upon each one of us through the operations of the spiritual gifts. Because these are basically divine empowerment of God's grace. So how important that is, isn't it? So charismata basically would then mean gifts that are given to spirit-filled Christians by the Holy Spirit as He wills, God wills, God will it, God planned for it, God defined how He's going to, who is going to receive it, how He's going to receive it, as He sees needs in the body of Christ. I think it's also incredible, you know, so I'm talking about, you know, spiritual gift today, and then we see the operation of the gifts right at the service. The word that comes to encourage us, God sees the need, and He allows the operation of the spiritual gifts in order to meet those needs. And there will be many other manifestations for many other needs that's going to be presented, you know, that's been needed even in the church, all right? So that is charismata. Then there is another word for spiritual gift that's been used. It's called what I call pneumatica. Pneumatica. It's basically we note spirituals, or rather a broader term to cover all kinds of gifts from God. All right, charismata basically, basically talk about gifts of grace, you know, and it's really used for the nine spirit, supernatural gifts that are listed in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. So, but you see, in, second, first, uh, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, and 14, verse 1, it talks about gifts of the Spirit. So, it's a broader term that's been used to denote any gifts that's given by the Spirit. That is pneumatica. Sometimes it can be used to interchangeably with charismata, all right? But there is a different emphasis. When you talk about charismata, it talks about gifts. Emphasis on the gifts of the Spirit. But when it comes to pneumatica, it talks about gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit is the emphasis when you talk about pneumatica. All right, so you see the, the difference that have been used, you know, for these two words in regard to spiritual gifts, right? But certainly we also basically use it uh, interchangeably. Now, these are not really that important in a sense, whether you remember, it's, is it a charismata or pneumatica, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you don't say under, you say swastika. <laughs> so whether it's charismata or pneumatica, just remember that God has given us spiritual gifts. Okay, so now that we know what are so-called spiritual gifts, then what are the spiritual gifts then? What are those gifts then? So what are the spiritual gifts? Now let me give you a list, okay? So this one, sorry, uh, you know, I cannot uh, wait for you to write down everything. You probably have to skip, you know, click and wipe. So four lists you can find in the Bible, they will have a listing of the spiritual gifts. Huh? The first one is in, found in Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, you have the few gifts that's mentioned there, exhortation, giving, leadership, mercy, prophecy, service, and teaching. Romans chapter 12. Oh, I listed there as Romans chapter 8, <laughs> sorry. It's a mistake there. It's Romans 12, huh? Not Romans 8. Let me just double check again. Yeah, 12. Not 8, huh? Sorry about that.
Okay? Then you have in the another list in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, where you have the gifts of administration, apostle, discernment of spirits, faith, healings, helps, knowledge, miracles, prophecy, teaching as well, as I mentioned there, tongues, tongues interpretation, and word of wisdom. Then just now I read for you Ephesians chapter 4, all right, that's a five gift there. Apostles, evangelism, pastor, evangelist, sorry, evangelist, pastor, prophecy, and teaching. Then there are other miscellaneous passages that you have about the gift of celibacy, gift of hospitality, martyrdom, missionary, and voluntary poverty. Now you look at the whole spread of spiritual gifts. Perhaps you may not realize that there are actually so many kinds of gifts that God has given. Incredible, right? Right? I wonder who has been given the gift of voluntary poverty. <laughs> now, these are basically lives. Now, I can give you another way of looking at the gifts in terms of categories. We categorize it, all right? Now, this is where basically we can categorize it into three categories. First of all, it will be the category of motivational gifts. I think the next slide, sorry. All right, motivational gifts. What are motivational gifts? Uh, let's come back to this afterwards. Let's give me the next slide, please. Yeah, motivational gifts. What are motivational gifts? Motiva motivational gifts are where... When God, how God works in a believer to shape his perspective in life and motivate his words and actions. Motivate, all right, to shape your life, to shape your actions. So gifts are there given to change your perspective in regard to your life. Then we have also ministry gifts. Ministry gifts. What are ministry gifts? how God works with what a believer does to serve and meet the needs of others. All right, so basically you see in Ephesians chapter 4, God has given us the gift of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, all right, to minister, to serve you, you know, to meet your needs for growth, you know, to encourage you, to inspire you, all right, to serve, uh, to, to, to meet the needs. Then there's also what we call the manifestation gifts, which are what you call also supernatural gifts. That's where how God works through a believer in a given situation to demonstrate his supernatural power. So it includes the, uh, gifts like, you know, gifts of miracle, for example, or gifts of healing, uh, where people are being healed instantly. That is a demonstration of God's supernatural power. So these are the manifestation gifts, right? So coming back, you see this gift according to the categories. When you talk about motivational gift, you see prophecy, right? Prophecy can also be a manifestation gift or a motivational gift. Depends on how it's been used, right? Something to motivate us. For example, the word this morning was uh, in terms of a motivational. Huh? So sometimes the prophecy manifestation, they talk about, you know, a prophecy given before... You know anything, you talk about, you know, something is going to happen and it truly happened. That is a supernatural power being manifested. So these are the gifts. Prophecy, serving, teaching, exalting, giving, organizing, mercy, administration, helps. These are motivational. Right? When in terms of ministry, you have the five there. Then manifestation, you have the word of wisdom, knowledge, discernment of spirits, faith, healings, miracles, Prophecy, tongues, tongues interpretation. Now, I, I'm not going to go through one by one what are those gifts. Right? It's going to take forever. You know, by the time I finish, it probably will be tea time. You'll miss your lunch. 
you got to go back, go and find out. You know, or next Sunday we can have a list of all these gift description. You know, in the Empower group, I go through with them. You know, they have a description of all those gifts. But all that you need to know is this. Basically, there are different categories of gifts that God has given us. Now, when it comes to manifestation gifts, I can subdivide it as well into three other subcategories. What are these? Just on manifestation gifts. Huh? Next slide. Yeah. Gifts to know spirit supernaturally. What are those gifts to know supernaturally? What of wisdom? What of knowledge? Discernment of spirits. Knowing supernaturally. Gifts to act supernaturally. Faith, healings, miracles. And what are the gifts to speak supernaturally? Prophecy, tongues, and tongues interpretation. So see, these are again subcategories of supernatural gifts or manifestation gifts. So many gifts, right? You see, how God loves you so much, loves all of us so much, they give all these different, different, different kinds of gifts for different, different kinds of purposes. And the fact is, God has given every single one of us, every single one of you, a gift. At least a gift. That's how much God loves the church. How much, what kind of desire that God has to want to strengthen and edify the church. So having known all these gifts, let's ask ourselves, what are those purposes of these gifts? You want to know why you, God has given us all these gifts? For what purpose? Yes, if we talk about edify, ultimately it's to edify, to equip us, all right, for to glorify God. That's ultimate. You know, gifts were given when the Ephesians I read just now to equip His people for works of service, so we grow, you know, uh, build up, we reach unity in the faith, in the knowledge of the Son, become mature, and all that, yes. But let me give you one by one. All right, what are the specific purposes that spiritual gifts has been given to the church? First of all, is to empower the work and weakness of the gospel. To empower the work and weakness of the gospel. You see, Christians all over the world minister in these ways, in the, through the spiritual gifts. Sometimes, for example, a gift of tongue may be administered in Somewhere, you know, a place, for example, Africa, where you will urge intercession for others that's across the ocean or the other part, the other side of the, of the, of the world. You know? You know, oftentimes, I, I, we read about, you know, uh, I remember there was a case where, you know, a, a missionary was sent to Africa and they were in danger of you know, being uh, 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 harmed and the home church, suddenly they sense it and they rose up and began to pray in that instant for that, not knowing what, has, what was happening over with the uh, missionary mission team over there. So you see, this is how gifts have been given, you know, to manifest the power of God for the work and witness of the gospel. The Holy Spirit basically orchestrate this gift to the common good of the church and its work for the gospel, to empower us for the gospel. Secondly, to bless everyone in common. You know, for example, an anointed message in tongues will be followed by the interpretation of exaltation that can send the church, you know, into worship, into even its knees. You know, many hearts can be convicted by the truth that's uttered in that message, right? Number three, to manifest God's presence on earth. You see, since the Holy Spirit is the one who shows or manifests God's presence in the world, so therefore, it's not surprising. Remember I, earlier on, in right at the beginning, where Paul calls spiritual gifts as manifestations of the Spirit. Huh? 
So when spiritual gifts are active, it's another indication of the presence of God, the Holy Spirit in the church. Because these spiritual gifts are manifestations of the gifts. How do I know or how do I sense the manifestation of the Spirit? It's when the spiritual gifts are in operation. Then we know God's presence has come upon the church. So one of the Spirit's primary purposes in this age is to manifest the presence of God, to give indications that make the presence of God known to people that's in the church. So when the Holy Spirit works in various ways that can be perceived by believers and also unbelievers, this will encourage us uh, people's faith that God is near, God is here, and that He's working to fulfill His purposes in the church and to bring blessing to His people. That is to manifest the presence of God on earth in the church. Number four is also to remind us of our dependence upon one another. You know, God has given, chose, God has chosen to give gifts to everyone, different gifts. He has not chosen to give spiritual gifts only to one person. Rather than giving every one believer all the gifts, he has chosen to give different gifts to different people. He did this so that, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, he did this so that no one would think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance to the faith, with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of, each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, who though many, Form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 5. That's why God gave us, every believer, different, different gifts. Not just one, one, one believer, you have all the gifts. It's because we are all one body, different parts. So different gifts, differing gifts, draws us together because we are focused, or rather we are forced to depend on one another. I don't have this gift, I need your gift. You don't have my this gift, you need my gift. So together we form the body of Christ. Number five, to edify the church. You see, God has given us spiritual gifts for the edification of the church. To build up the body of Christ in love and unity. Like in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, that, in God, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So as God distributes His gifts to, among His people, His power, His love, His wisdom are displayed gloriously, and the body of Christ is edified. So you see, the spiritual gifts are God's provisions, are God's provision to equip His children to minister to others in ways that goes beyond your human capability, human creative, your human ingenuity. None of us, on our own human abilities, can minister in the ways that God intended unless we use the spiritual gifts that have been given by God Himself. You know what I'm saying? You see, even for, for example, you know, our healing rooms, volunteers, or even our counselors. But I may teach them the skill of counseling. You know, the micro skills, how you have to, the way you sit, the way you listen, the way you ask questions. I can give them all these all this skills. Yeah, they can be a good counselor using all the skills. We have good secular counselors. But you will never be able to go beyond the secular into what you call the spirituals, knowing the spiritual realm, unless you have the gifts that comes from the Holy Spirit to do that work of the ministry. 
The same way, you know, the, the healing room volunteers, they can't use their own uh, understanding, their, their own strength, unless God empowers them and use them as vessels for healing. So human capabilities will not be able to do what God wants to do unless through the use of the Holy Spirit in those spiritual gifts. Number five and number six, to reveal the living God to unbelievers. You see, the Spirit of God works through the spiritual gifts in ways that can be perceived by both believers and unbelievers. Believers will be encouraged because they're reminded that God truly is near and is actively carrying out His will on the earth. But unbelievers will also come to face to face with the reality of the living God as he began to display his power, his love, and his wisdom through God's people. And lastly, to bring glory to God. Everything is all done for the sake of bringing glory to God, that God may be glorified. When we use the spiritual gifts that God has given us effectively and extensively, used for the purposes that God has given, uh, has uh, intended it for, then all this will ultimately glorify God, God himself. Amen? So now you know the purposes of, of the spiritual gifts. We want to know how can these spiritual gifts impact the church? What will you do for the church? That's so why I want you to very discover your gifts because it's important that the church are impacted and impacted in the right way, and impacted in a very positive way that will cause it to be growing and strengthened and rise. So, since spiritual gifts are very part of the nature of God, given for us to use and to fulfill His purposes and in our lives, so as we begin to use those spiritual gifts, the whole body of Christ will be edified, unified, and mature. That's what Ephesians chapter 4 tells us. They equip us for the works of service that we all become mature and grow into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So, when spiritual gifts are used, how will it impact the church? First of all, there will be unity and harmony in the church. You see, the body of Christ is meant to function in the same manner that a physical body functions. If one part of the body doesn't function well, the whole physical body is not in a good shape. It's not healthy. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 tells us this. Just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. So the unity and interdependency of the body is an example of how spiritual gifts impact the church. There's this author in his book, Systematic Theology, says this. The idea that the Holy Spirit unifies the church is also evident in the fact that strife, disputes, dissensions, factions are desires of the flesh that are opposed to being led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who produces love in our hearts, according to those verses, and this love binds everything together in perfect harmony. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. Therefore, when the Holy Spirit is working strongly in the church to manifest God's presence, again, we meant to manifest God's presence through spiritual gifts, one evidence will be a beautiful harmony in the church community and overflowing love for one another. See how spiritual, spiritual gifts can impact the church by bringing about unity and harmony when there's so, over, so much of overflowing love for one another. Number two, how does spiritual gifts impact the church? Every member of the body is strategically positioned in the body. Remember I said, because solely because of God's choice, God gave each of his children 
gifts as He pleases. Right? You will have certain gifts that I may not have. I will have gifts that you may not have. That is God's choice, entirely God's choice. Don't ask me why I don't have this gift you have, or I, you have this gift I don't have. That is God's choice. So God Himself has strategically placed the members of the body of Christ with their variety of God-given gifts in the body to function accordingly. So you and I have been positioned with that gift to function accordingly in that body. Not to do anything else, but to function according to the gift that God has given you. So you need to function according to the gifts that God has given you. That is where you find yourself in that right position. So ideally, these members, you, all of us, will function not independently as servants of God, but rather we will function as a healthy, contributing members of the church. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 and verse 21, it's not there, but note it down because it says this, but in fact, God has placed the past in the body. When God has placed the past in the body, He has also given gifts accordingly, accordingly to the past in the body. Every one, of you, every one of you, every one of them, just as He wanted them to be. Verse 18 tells us this. Then verse 21 says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Why? Because we all need each other. And God has positioned us in that part of the body precisely because you need me, I need you. So gifts have been given precisely according to your position that God has placed you in to function accordingly. You understand what I'm saying? So you have a place, you have a role to play. Number three, how does spiritual gifts impact the church? The church will also experience the fullness of God's love. You see, if one Christian possesses all the spiritual gifts, he will become self-sufficient. And then he would have no need for any other people. Right? But yet, again, God has given deliberately given different gifts so that we will need each other. So as each believer begins to respond to the needs according to his particular spiritual gift, if somebody has a need for help, I minister according to my gifts of help. If somebody needs encouragement, I give my gifts, you know, to encourage. Then what happens is that as God allows us to serve Him in those roles of spiritual service, the body of Christ will then experience the fullness of God's love. You see, God wants us to know this love that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19, so that He is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us, according to His power which is at work within us. Spiritual gifts, manifestation of the Spirit. When you talk about manifestation of the Spirit, it talks about the power of God that's at work within us. Then we will experience the fullness of God's love. Number four, neglected gifts will diminish the effectiveness of the church. You see, what happens is this. If we do not accept and obediently use our spiritual gifts, which are expressions of God's uh, manifold grace, we neglect God's work of grace in our lives. We neglect God's work of grace in our lives. Basically, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 tells us, we basically will have failed of the grace of God. Spiritual gifts are bestowments of God's grace. If you have been given a gift, you don't want to use that gift, 
you basically have failed of the grace of God, of this bestowment of God's grace in your life. You understand what I'm saying? If you're unhappy, you know, because you think you're not the most important or, or most honored or most noticed or most needed part of the body, you don't automatically stop being an integral part of the body. You know, even if you're not, not happy, you're still part of the body. So, but what happens is this. You cease to be useful to your fullest potential. Your fullest potential is when you use those gifts. But when you are not happy about it, you don't want to use those gifts, you don't stop being part of the body. But you cease to be useful to your fullest potential. And what happens is also is that if you are not using it, you basically have refused to function according to the role and place that God has given you. You know what I'm saying? So, you will have forfeited the privilege and the joy of carrying out God's given assignment for you. And when that happens, because you are supposed to play a role, don't care whether it's big or small role, still a role, in the body of Christ, when you don't function in your role, the church is not as healthy as it should be. The effectiveness of the church will not be there. It will be diminished. It still can can work, but it will be diminished because one part is not playing its role. See how important you are? How important you are? Every single one of us. Number five, spiritual gifts gives direction and purpose in life. You see, knowing that each one of us have gifts, they are needed, valuable. It will give us the sense of purpose in God's kingdom. I tell myself, you know, I have this gift. I discover my gifts and I have a purpose. God has a purpose for me to use this gift in the body of Christ. Doesn't that give you a sense of purpose? Doesn't that give you a sense of direction of what you should do doing in the church? So that as a result, you have a sense of purpose and, and direction in life. As you begin to experience, you will, you will experience personal fulfillment and great joy. You will experience purpose in life. And together, therefore, the church, as we mature in our understanding of spiritual gifts and using of these gifts, we become channels of God's power. Then in the end, the whole church will have direction and have life. Spiritual gifts also strengthens the church. In Romans chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, Paul was writing to the church in Rome, and he said this, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. You know, the translation, impart to you some spiritual gift, uh, can be misleading. Okay, it's as if God is coming and saying, I have this gift, I want to impart to you this gift. No, it's not coming from Paul. Spiritual gifts don't come from Paul. Come from the Holy Spirit. So it may be a bit misleading when you say, I may impart you some spiritual gift. You know, it's as if God wants them to have some gift, they can impart to them. But it's, it's more of this, what, is, what Paul is intending to say is that you may receive the benefit of the operation of those gifts in my life. You may receive this ministry. All right? It's more like saying, I long to see you that I may use my gifts to strengthen you. All right? What Paul is saying is that I may use my gifts to strengthen you. So what is important for us to know from this text is that spiritual gifts are for strengthening others. Spiritual gifts are for strengthening others. So it does suggest that gifts are given to be given. Spirit gifts are given to be given. Not that you're imparting those gifts, only the Holy Spirit can impart those gifts, but you use the gifts to give to others so that they may be strengthened 
in their life. You are not to be hoarded and kept, but I desire to share with you my spiritual gift. Not in any way to be proud of, but to minister you to, and for the purpose. What is Paul referring to that you may be strengthened? Not in terms of bodily strength, but to be strengthened in your faith. The strengthening of faith. The same word is being used in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. We say we send Timothy, right, to strengthen you in the faith and to exhort you. So we have spiritual gifts in order to help other people keep the faith and maintain a firm foothold during life storms. They will keep the faith, not lose faith, but strengthen in our faith. Thus, when spiritual gifts are in operation, the whole church also is strengthened and edified. Amen? Hallelujah. And lastly, the grace of God will be poured out in greater measure. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 says, Each of you have, should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. The spiritual gifts come with different, different kinds of gifts in its various forms. And so we are to be faithful stewards of God's grace. So what he's saying here is that spiritual gifts are vehicles for God's grace to be poured out. If we are to receive spiritual gifts, it's a bestowment of God's grace. The different kinds of gifts are the bestowment of God's grace in its various forms. The many forms of God's grace come about through the different kind of gifts. And you and I are stewards of that grace. What do you mean by steward? What do you mean by steward? Huh? Used in trust, basically, right? It's been given, not mine, but God has given me so that I may use it, you know, according to what He expects me to. I'm using it in trust. So we are all stewards of God's grace, you know. You and I, every single one of us, God has given you a gift. He has made you a steward of His grace. And He wants you and I to show forth the extent of God's grace in the particular form that your gift has taken of God's grace, the those form of God's grace. He wants you to use that so that he, people may know the extent of God's grace in our lives. So therefore, it's our duty to disperse this grace for others. The more we exercise these gifts, the more the grace of God is poured out in greater measure. And we all need the grace of God as never before. So, in conclusion, everyone say, I am gifted to impact. So let us then humbly and willingly surrender our lives to God for His use in the body of Christ. So let us commit to use our, discover our gifts and begin to use it to impact the church and the community around us. Now you have that, I'm not going to do it now, because if I do it now, you also will miss your lunch. Take it back. All right? Take it back home. Can you come in and say, you know, I'm going to try and discover my spiritual gifts. Now, that exercise is not a final authority to say, yes, this is mine. You know, nobody can rob me of this gift. It's mine, it's mine, this is mine, you know. No but it's a way for us to discover as an initial step. You know, so I want you to go back and do the exercise. Now, if you do not know how to score it, you fill it up, your name, your contact number, then the following Sunday, you return it back to the church office. All right? Then we'll do the scoring, then we'll tell you what are your possible gifts that God may have given you. Now, if you can score... You know how to do it and follow the, the instruction? Well, I also encourage you to do this. There's another slip of paper, a loose sheet of paper, right? That basically will give you a summary, 
summary results of those gifts, the answers, the questions that are there. Now, I make it a choice for you whether you want to return that slip of paper to us. Now, the benefit of returning that paper to us is this. Where we will look at those gifts that you possibly may have, you know, and the pastor will probably, the leaders will just begin to pray and see, you know, we can confirm it. If indeed, you may have these gifts. Then we will do what we need to do to encourage you in the operation of those gifts. Whether in terms of ministry, you know, service in any way, so that you may perform your role and function as God's steward, as stewards of God's grace in your life. So you return that slip of paper to us. You know, we can make a copy for you if you need to. Then we will use it according to how God will direct us to use so that the whole church begins to rise and serve and be strengthened and edified. Is that wonderful? Okay, so again, I'll leave it to you, the choice, whether you want to return the slip of paper to us. If you don't, we will not know your gift. It's as, as simple as that. I will not know your gift. And as such, I may not be able to help you to perform your role and function according to your gifts. All right? Now, would you just stand with me? Worship team, please come. Hallelujah. So the last part, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 tells us, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts. You do not know your gifts, now is the time and say, God, I want to know what are the gifts that you have given me. Help me to discover my gifts so that I may use it as your steward of your grace, that I may use it in the church so that according to the function, to the role that he has willed for me for my life. Amen? Eagerly desire the spiritual gifts. Come, worship team. This us say that song. I think, um, what was this? Was it a second or third song? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come, let's, 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 because all of us are eagerly desiring the spiritual gifts. We eagerly desire to worship God, amen? And let the Holy Spirit begin to speak to us and say, you know, prompt us and say, hey, the Spirit is speaking to me and saying, you know, God, God has given me the gift. God wants me to use those gifts. God wants me to make, be, be making a difference to strengthen the church, to strengthen the body of Christ. I'm part of this body of Christ. And I must do something for this body of Christ. Come. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, oh God. And so we worship you, Lord. Oh, yes, oh God, we lift up our voices. We lift up our lives, oh Lord. And God, and say, Lord, use this life, oh God. Use this life for your glory. I love my life. Yes, Lord. Search for you, Lord. You call me to your side. With all of my heart, I'm desperate for more. Your prayer. Presence is my life, the cry of my heart is to be where you are. Tell him, Jesus. I love your presence. I love your presence, Father. Everything I need, I love, and I love your presence. I love your presence. I can hear you call. I run in. 
into your arms Jesus you are all my heart is longing for yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. yes oh God we want more we want more oh God hallelujah oh yes Lord you are my strength you are my Surround me with your song All that my soul will know is your peace You hide me in your love The cry of my heart is to be where you are To be where you the Lord you have saved us save us for life save us for a purpose and God Lord today we stand the Lord knowing that God we are all stewards of your grace and every single one of us has been gifted gifted for a purpose gifted not to make us proud 
not to show off how, how capable we are or how good we are, but we have been all been gifted to impact the church, to impact the world. Every one of us. Father, we long to know what are the gifts that God you have given us. Not because we want to use it for our own pride, but because, Lord, we need to use those gifts to minister, to serve, to strengthen the church, to live up to our potential, to be useful in your hands. Father, we pray that God, you encourage us, oh God, to move in the direction of those gifts that God you have given us. And I pray, Father, even as your people begin to embark on this discovery, I pray that, God, you will sovereignly, through your Holy Spirit, lead them, O oh God, to discover the rightful gifts that, God, you have given to each one of us, O oh God. That, God, we will rise and begin to use those gifts for the strengthening of our church. Lord, we want to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our church, O oh God. The manifestation of your Holy Spirit, the power of your Holy Spirit manifested in our church, in our service, through the people of God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. So church eagerly desire the spiritual gifts. For that is your purpose. That is the purpose of God for you. That is your destiny. That is your calling. Don't say, no, I don't want to do anything because you have refused to function. You will have forfeited the privilege of the joy of serving and living up to your potential in the kingdom of God. So use those gifts. And God has given you the gifts. So I pray for your people right now, Lord, that God, that God, you do have these days, so Lord, you will minister, that they will humbly come before you even as they go through the exercise of God, as they answer those questions of God. That Lord, there will be a prompting of God within their spirit of God, and that comes from your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit is going to be at work in their lives to help them to discover these gifts and so that they can use it. For your glory. For your glory. Lord, I thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your presence here, Lord. Truly, we can sense your presence. And God, you're so wonderful, Lord. So wonderful to have your presence. And may this presence go with us, oh God. And we carry this presence, oh God, as your people. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Amen.